character breakdown of my roleplay, The Crimson Rose. This is an ongoing series of videos, both meant to help me with the loss of a friendship, and to help others to better understand the depth of character and story development that often goes into both online roleplaying and tabletop. <clears throat> this video uh, is dedicated to the main character in which the story was named after, Hayato, aka The Crimson Rose. While some background was not necessary for the others, I feel I should cover it now because it is needed to better understand Hayato's position and how certain events took place. There are some things, of course, I have to admit or not fully explain in order to remain within the rules of YouTube policy, but I will do my best to give it the most I can. Hayato's world is not an alternate reality, not a historical reality, or anything of the sort. This story takes place in a purely fictional setting that is set in a realm space above Earth's. The characters Tuki, Tukit, and Tiamil are the only ones set to a historical fantasy version of Earth and had to ascend to the realm Hayato and the others existed in. The realm naturally has a few differences outside of physical ones that separate a male of any species from the female. Men can c carry children and over 90% of the population is male. Very few characters are actually considered straight and due to the magic available, transgenderism as well as shifting and non-binary people are not uncommon. We represented these types of characters by having them start one gender and change into another, as well as showing the few who struggled with others over the change. For trans and non-binary, for trans and non-binaries, <coughs> the shifting genders either had both genders physically in some manner or could literally physically take whichever gender they felt most like being at that time in the story. I felt these were important elements to bring up because Hayato is and remained male throughout the story, but is referred to as the queen and, as he was, the mother of several characters. He also has a lot of my personality traits and difficulty admitting to or wanting to admit to things that he most desires. This often caused people to, I tell the story to to assume that Hayato was brainwashed or entirely forced into his relationship, when in fact it was actually just a physical enjoyment or thrill to play the victim to, one of, to the one he loved. It was a form of... Uh, role play. Of course, because the story is fantasy and written words, unlike real life, the characters had ways to know when the one they were pursuing was actually in love or wanted the pursuit or was actually against it. <clears throat> this can't happen as mysteriously in real life, and I do not condone going on assumptions into any relationship. There should always be consent given in some way, whether written, spoken, or through legitimate sign language. This is for the safety of both parties. Now, there are also the fantasy elements of near-immortal lifespans and superpower or godlike abilities as well. From telepathy to literally changing one's genetic code and body on a whim. Blurring the lines of familial bonds, that also cannot happen in real life. I do not condone familiar relationships in this way because realistically there is no ability to change who you are actually related to. We can't die and be reborn in a body that was never born. We cannot magically give ourselves a new bloodline or transfer our souls either. I know that is a lot to go over before even talking about the character, but a lot of his story crosses over all these fantasy elements. I did this to give anyone who may not want to hear these elements a huge warning before deciding to continue into Hayato's story development. I brushed over a lot of these in Mimosa's portion because I felt I could cover most of his story without detailing it. 
that being said, some of what was not mentioned in his will be in this video. And if necessary, Hayato will have a part 2 to cover it all. And now, on to Hayato's actual story. The premise is one um, many stories, both in and out of the typical yaoi manga, may contain. Hayato starts out a captive in the Garden of the King, which is a pleasure prison for those suspected of treason or who have actively broken the castle laws. Hayato is both, though in truth, he is only guilty of the latter. He is honestly in love with the king, but cannot reconcile his feelings with the knowledge that the king slaughtered his entire family and those who were part of the temple to his god during the conquest. This has led him constantly rebelling against the rules in which state as a third level upper echelon member he is not allowed to have relations with anyone above him or below him in rank. Of course, the king, who, like Hayato, does not realize he is under the influence of Hayato's gifts, has made this an easy law for Hayato to break. Hayato's gifts as the Crimson Rose meant it the first person to touch him directly in any way after maturity would hear his true desires <coughs> as a subconscious voice directing their actions as if the thoughts were their own. It also causes a huge amount of jealousy and attraction over the Crimson Rose. The touch was an inadvertent one, running his fingers through Hayato's hair on the day of his capture. This locking of minds was a protection implement because Hayato's greatest power is his subconscious influence over fate itself when concerning the one he loves. That voice convinced the king to put Hayato into rank 3, far enough that the strange draw would hopefully keep them apart, and still high enough to live in the castle proper so he could watch Hayato from a distance. It also convinced him not to put anyone else in Hayato's rank, so that Hayato would have to break laws to find anyone else. Trying to ignore his own attraction willfully, however, Hayato would seek out people and openly flirt. Though he never physically touched anyone, he would have them come and spend nights talking, drinking, and flirting endlessly just to irk Tukit. This led to the creation of the king's prison garden in which Hayato became addicted to being chained up and admired for his beauty in it. It was so common to find him there that the king purposely had Hayato's position mockingly placed as the central area of the garden and planted red roses all around it. A plaque was eventually designed and placed there as well, reading this post as reserved for the king's crimson rose, Hayato. Conflicted between his desire for the king and his hatred, Hayato is brought to his position and actively finds ways to break the laws even here. He learns that a drug which causes one's senses to be enhanced and causes the user to feel a sensual high can be found in the garden, and he uses it every time he is brought there as a way to escape and flaunt his disobedience to the king's wishes, that he be miserable in the garden. Of course, the king visits in the opening to find Hayato in the garden while on the drug, luring the guards to entertain themselves with his presence. And this is when the king doesn't just remove Hayato, but announces his intentions to make Hayato his queen. This, of course, causes a storm of mixed and volatile emotions to well up inside of the Crimson Rose, as he is dragged, still in chains, to the king's chambers. Hayato struggles against the king's pursuit physically and denies those advances vocally, but both deep down and through the unknown mental bond, the king and Hayato are well aware he is lying. He responds physically to the king's touches and rapidly, and the game of cat and mouse begins between them. Hayato's character is shown through several levels of description. He has the struggles of physically shoving and tantrums. His body is actively showing natural attraction and desire from the smallest touches and the king's verbal descriptions of his own desire. 
his spoken words of denial to what he feels and wants, his personal thoughts and questions of why and how he could both want and love someone while at the same time hating them. And finally, that fantasy element of his subconscious actively directing Tukit into protecting and pursuing him. Hayato was and is the epitome of a submissive character written to desire a total loss of control. If he admits to what he craves, then that attraction he feels loses the ability to reach the same height of desire um, to him admitting it to his lover is the same as giving permission, which in itself is a form of control. This makes every move complex as he struggles to let Tukit know he loves him, while never truly admitting to anything. At the same time, it causes those around them to view Tukit as some sort of cruel monster that isn't entirely accurate. This is how Hayato began, of course, and over time his character became much more complex, and um, after overcoming the initial hurdles, he would find himself more and more entangled into the mess of what is to be unable to admit to his feelings, and that perilous connection between different types and levels of love and attraction, physical and otherwise. Despite only covering the very beginnings of his character so far, um, I feel the need to end the video here so that both I and my listeners, you, can pull back if needed before diving even deeper. I hope you are enjoying this series still, if this is not the first one, um, but uh, it has intrigued you, uh, and that if it is that it's intrigued you, um, I have links to both the first video in the series, as well as the last one I made before Hayato's, if you missed it. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like, and if you enjoyed this one, or my art videos, or my gaming ones, hit subscribe so you can know when I next upload. I do have a lot going on, so occasionally it may be days or weeks between, but I do my best to record whenever possible. Catch you all later. Bye.